This white wing radiograph showing the premolars and the molars uh, also shows a large, very large actually, extensive radiolucency that has affected the crown, enamel, dentine, and the part of the root of the, uh, the upper first molar. Uh, this is the typical appearance again of a smooth surface caries that has affected the buccal surface of the tooth. Uh, it, uh, of course, uh, it results from the same reason is that they, because of the food impaction on, in the sulcus area on the buccal surface and it will again uh, cause the uh, spread of this lesion affecting most of the crown. Why would I say the enamel has been uh, involved? Because if you compare the radio opacity or, uh, of enamel on the mesial surface of the tooth to the radio opacity, to the remaining radio opacity of the remaining enamel, you will see that the remaining enamel has lost some of its radio opacity. It means that has been affected by the carious lesion. Dentine, of course, is involved in, in its majority, and the root is also involved. These lesions do not assume an, uh, a specific shape. However, it tends to gives, give the impression that the whole crown is affected uh, and the pulp is exposed. Again, this is a bit of a hasty decision. We need to examine the cl uh, tooth clinically and see uh, uh, how much of the crown is affected. And we can then decide whether the pulp is involved or the whole crown is uh, affected. But the <coughs> because of the, uh, the cavity being present on the buccal surface of the tooth, it will tend to cast its image on the whole of the crown, which gives us the impression that the whole crown is destroyed. Again, I would advise that the tooth should be clinically, uh, clinically examined <coughs> to decide whether or not is the, the whole crown is involved or the pulp is involved in this case.